Hello everyone, um, today we're going to move into the life and the physical sciences. That's very exciting. Uh, we have completed the anatomy and the physiology section, so now we are in life and the physical sciences. And today we're going to look at cell structure, function, and organization. Now this is a comparison between T6 and T7. So in terms of the basic cell parts and functions of the different cell organelles and different part of cell components, that's pretty much the same. There's no change. Also, um, there is a topic that was covered by T6, but now is listed as a new learning objective. And that's the levels of hierarchical organization of the body. And that's basically how simple components are built together to form more complex systems. So we'll go over that on the next slide. There is a major new learning object objective added to T7. Now there might be a little bit of this topic in T6, but it was never very important. But now T7 has really identified this as a learning objective. So you really need to know really well about this topic. And this is about the processes and functions of mitosis and meiosis. So these two are different types of cell division. So cell division is a process of where one step can divide and produce multiple cells, right? That's cell division. And in our body, we have two different types of cell divisions. I may have mentioned this before, but these two different types of cell divisions are used to make different cells in our body. So I'll go over that in more detail later in this presentation. All right, now first let's look at the levels of a hierarchy of the body. One student asked me a long time ago to go over this topic, um, but I just didn't get a chance. And I was thinking, okay, I could cover this topic when I got to this lesson, but I didn't really expect that it would take this long. So um, my apologies, but here we are. We're gonna talk about this, uh, the kind of tiered, organization of the body. Everything starts with chemicals. The so chemicals are the smallest components, right? They're just molecules that you really cannot see with uh, naked eye, right? They're so tiny. So we have talked about some of the important macromolecules that make up the body, that right? make up the life. So those uh, important micromolecules are carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids. Right? Carbohydrates provide energy. They're the immediate energy source, and they're basically sugar, right? They could be monosaccharides or disaccharides, which are simple sugars, or could have starch, right, or cellulose, or glycogen. Those are complex sugars. They're known as polysaccharides, they're big complex sugar. They're known as polysaccharides. Uh, we also have proteins, right? Proteins perform a very diverse range of functions in our body, right? They can be antibodies, they can be muscle fibers, um, they can be carriers that transport the things. So proteins are very important. Lipids are fats and oils, right? And also lipid is a very important part of the cell membrane, right? Phospholipid, that's the backbone of the cell membrane, very important. Nucleic acids are genetic materials. Okay, so we have DNA, we have RNA, and a lot of people tend to forget this, but ATP, right, the energy source, it's also a type of a nucleic acid. All right, so now we have these chemicals, and we can use these chemicals as building blocks, and we're gonna make a bigger things. So we can make cell parts, Okay, or cell organelles. Okay. And then we can use these cell parts to build a cell. Right? So the next level that T considers is cells. But you know that between chemicals and cells, you have cell parts or cell organelles. Right? Okay, now at the cell level, uh, we basically have a cell, right? And a cell is the most basic unit for life. Um, that's the most basic, basic function unit of a body. All right, now 
cells with similar structures and functions can form a specific type of a tissue. And then we have four major types of tissues, epithelial tissue. So these tissue can be found uh, in the inner lining of uh, different organs or tracts. Um, they can also be found in on the surface of the body, right? They're the uh, superficial layer of the skin. Right? We also have muscle tissues, right? We have three types of muscle tissues and see if you can remember all the three. So I will give you three seconds. All right, so we have a cardiac muscle tissue, right? Which is found in the heart. We have skeletal tissue. That's the muscle tissue that you can find in your major muscles, right? Um, that helps you create movement and locomotion. And lastly, we have a smooth muscle tissue, right? That's the muscle tissue that does not generate very strong con contraction. Instead, they have this kind of weaker and a slower contraction, which is good for inner organs, right? You don't want your stomach or your bowels to move too violently, right? So that's smooth muscle tissue that is usually found in the wall of hollow organs. Okay, connective tissue, that's a wide range of tissues. It's a really big group and connective tissue is really everywhere, right? You can find it in the dermis layer of the skin. You can find it connecting muscles and bones, right? That's known as tendons. Tendons connect muscles to bones and ligaments connect the bones to bones. And um, bones, osseous tissue is also considered as connective tissue. And how about blood? That blood is also a type of connective tissue. So connective tissue is a really diverse, a very large group uh, of tissues. And lastly, we have nervous tissue, right? That's a tissue that you can find in the brain, in the spinal cord, and in other parts of your body, right? When you have the peripheral nervous system. All right, now with multiple tissues that will form organs, right? So those tissues work together to form a, a organ with a particular function. So for, for example, your brain is an organ, your liver is an organ, uh, the small intestine is an organ, right? Um, so all these are uh, organs, and again, they consist of multiple types of tissues. The next level is going to be organ systems. So each organ system will have multiple organs work collectively. So, for example, the nervous system consists of the brain and the spinal cord, right? And some people may include some of the peripheral nerves as part of the nervous system as well. And when you think about the cardiovascular system, that's the heart and blood vessels, right? And then when you think about the digestive system, that's a very big system. It consists of the mouth, you know, the throat, the uh, esophagus, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, and there are also accessory organs, right? Like the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas. It's very interesting to look at, you know, the, the different components of an organ system and how they work together to achieve a certain goals. All right, now with multiple organ systems, now we have a body, right? We have an organism. So that's uh, pretty much the entire body with coordination and collaboration among all the organ systems. All right, so now let's look at a practice question. All right, this question asks you to rank the following examples from least to most complex according to the hierarchy of the body. So from least to most complex, that means you are going to rank them from the smallest component to the largest component. Right? All right, so which one's going to be the smallest component? That's going to be the macromolecules, right? The chemicals that make up things. So which of the following is a chemical is an important macromolecule. That's the lipid, right? So A is going to be the first. And 
Different uh, macromolecules will form cell parts, and then cell parts will form a cell, right? So which one is a cell? Neuron, right? Basically, it's a nervous cell. So C is going to be the second. And the cells with the similar structures and functions can form a certain type of tissue, right? So in this case, it looks like we're looking at the central nervous system. So gray matter, that's type of tissue. And that's where you can find the neurons, right? The most important type of cell in the nervous system. All right, now, so we have tissue, and then the next level is going to be an organ. So brain is the organ, and then the organ system is the central nervous system. All right, so that's the correct answer.